Mount Pleasant is usually the first village to host Tobago's annual Easter goat races. The celebrations are open to people of all ages and features a combination of goat races and novelty events to entertain the crowd. Kids can also join in on the fun as there's a range of activities for them, starting with the traditional bouncy castle. I'm Davia Chambers and Let's Talk Tobago starts now. This week, some insight on the opening of the Bell Garden fishing facility. Handball, a new sport for Tobago, and later, highlights on the pig farming industry on this island. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. Nine days of fun in the sun. The Tobago Jazz Experience, April 16th to 24th, featuring David Rudder, Three Canal, Third World, J. Cole, Arturo Tappan, Etienne Charles, and Grammy Award winning artiste Maxwell and Miss Lauren Hill. For more info, visit www.tobagojazzexperience.com. The Tobago Jazz Experience is sponsored by the THA Division of Tourism, Flow, TDC, Carib, and Caribbean Airlines. The Tobago Jazz Experience is much more than music. Carib Dixieland Steel Orchestra was established in 1955. In 2007, they were the Tobago Panorama Champions as well as placed fourth in the medium band category for the national competition. Our first story is a fishy one and it takes us to the community of Bell Garden where we are enlightened on how a new facility is helping the fishing business in that countryside village. For generations, this is the bay where Bell Garden fishermen brought in their catch to be sold on the beach or at the roadside. That's now changed with the opening of their very own fishing facility. It's equipped with modern sanitary amenities such as stainless steel countertops, a machine for waste disposal, and a freezer room for storing their catch. One fisherman explains how the facilities will improve the way he does business. Many of us plan to move from this small boat system into bigger boats, right? And um, one of my retirement plans was to go for an ice boat. And once we have facilities like this, we could anchor right here rather than have to go to Scarborough to anchor where you can get ice and other things. A facility like this, where you could come in with a large catch where you could be able to get good storage and everything. The facility also has a meeting room, wet room, walk-in chiller, ice machine and a rest room. The fishermen are also grateful for the security features. We are hoping that this lighting facility that is in place will be able to help as a deterrent to those who have the mindset to relieve fishermen of their equipment. The Division of Agriculture, Marine Affairs, Marketing and the Environment, which is responsible for building the facility, is encouraging both fishermen and consumers to embrace the more modern and hygienic ways of handling and selling fish. We are charged with, with the responsibility of having a product sold to you safely in phytosanitary conditions. If you can't provide the steel table out there, if you cannot provide the ice out there, if you cannot provide the sanitary countertops and nice flowing water out there, then you have no competition. You have no other to come down here. This facility is seen as a very important step in creating a more sustainable fishing industry on the island. I'm Omidara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Carib Dixieland Steel Orchestra hosts training programs for people interested in learning to play the pan. The sessions are primarily offered between the May to August period. Many of the young players in the band came through this training program. Now, do you remember the sargasm seaweed invasion and the impact it had on the tourism sector last year? Well, this year, disaster responders and environmental agencies are planning ahead. 
Here's more in this report. Tons of sargassum seaweed invaded Tobago's Atlantic coastline last year. It's not yet certain whether it will come again in 2016. But the authorities are preparing for such an event by setting up a framework for a Tobago Sargassum Emergency Response Plan. One aspect of the plan deals with tracking the seaweed's movement via satellite and other data collection methods. Early warning has become a very important element as for early sighting as to how we will do the trajectory as to the direction that these um, the sargassum um, travel may be on the, on the sea. So what we are looking at is early detection one, utilizing some of these stakeholders, the importance of people from the Caribbean airlines, their sighting, fishermen, fisher folks at sea, and also the meteorological service. The plan is being prepared through collaborative efforts among several agencies, including the Tobago Emergency Management Agency, TEMA, the Institute of Marine Affairs, and the THA's Department of Natural Resources. The committee is also exploring options for an effective cleanup campaign. One of the things that was established is the area of a tier system. For example, on a regular basis, persons has the responsibility for cleaning of the beaches. And therefore, in the light of it being um, impacted heavily, what are the tier systems, how we will regulate that? And the committee was able to set up themselves into functional working groups that will look at these five major areas. It's also important to have a reliable way of keeping the public informed. Risk communication takes at least three parts. One, what you do in terms of notif notifying the public in advance of. Also, um, certain areas as it relates to in the risk communication strategy as it relates to um, what are some of the guidelines that you wish to give the general public. Tobago's Sargassum Seaweed Response Plan should be completed in April. It will be incorporated into the National Environmental Response Plan. I'm Kundi Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. Carib Dixieland was renamed this year and is now called Carib Brewery Dixieland Steel Orchestra along with a little makeover. Principals from schools all over Tobago gathered to focus on the major issues affecting the educational institutions. Here are the highlights. In recent months, scenes of violence involving students have frequently erupted on social media and in the news. Solving this problem was one of the topics of discussion when the nation's primary school's principals came together at their conference, entitled Leading to Win in the 21st Century. If we could be better leaders and very relevant leaders to the needs of the children in the 21st century, we could even have a, 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 a better pool on, and, and, and more success in terms of managing school violence and other problems that manifest themselves nowadays. The former principal of the Signal Hill Secondary School and current chief secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly, Mr. Over London, suggested that the principals establish a record of their school's achievements for public relation purposes, have non-crisis meetings, network with other principals, and make meaningful suggestions to the policy makers, recommendations which many in attendance found useful. What I guess he's saying is that when we have this kind of forum and we are to contribute, it's not just necessarily to make nebulous statements and, and, um, and, and point out the problems, but we must be very clear as to what we expect of the, the, the policy makers so that we could actually you know, be a, a stronger leading force in, in, in the um, delivery of education in Tobago. Nearly 100 principals participated in the one-day conference. Mr. Eastman explained the importance of this annual gathering. We expect that um, principals will be encouraged and, and, and um, you know, strengthened to face the, the, the challenge. It's a very daunting challenge. Um, emotionally, people could feel inundated and, 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 and fed up. But, you know, when we discuss with one another and we look at the professional advice, then the, the hope is that people feel empowered. From the conference, principals will be able to gain new ideas on how they can become better leaders and manage their schools more effectively as they help to nurture our country's young citizens. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. On the other side of the break, a new sport is introduced to Tobago. Stay with us for the details. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back.
This facility behind me was home to the Mount Pleasant Easter Sports Festival last week. There were a combination of 15 goat races and 20 track races to keep the crowd going. And if that wasn't enough, then the novelty events would have grabbed some serious attention. Now that I have your mind going, it's time for a riddle. What's tactical and requires a lot of speed and agility? It's handball and Omodara Mills has the highlights on the ways in which this can benefit the island. Here's more in this next report. It borrowed moves from water polo, netball and football, but you cannot use your feet. It's handball, a game played with 70 members for about an hour on either indoor or outdoor courts. It's now being introduced to coaches and children from primary and secondary schools on the island. I think the game is a very tense game, a very rough game, but it looks entertaining and fun. The Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport partnered with the Trinidad and Tobago Handball Association and a coach from Portugal to carry out the three-day international level one handball workshop. The sport is one healthy option to keep young people active. This game could also be played outdoor. No? The, um, the, hockey, the hockey size posts and um, the dimension, I think it's 60 by 40, something like that. And it plays for like an hour or so. There are lots of lighting facility about the place and there are lots of youths um, who are not able to play football, who are not getting involved in cricket. This is, um, is a sport that you know, doesn't need a lot of equipment and so on. And, you know, we tried. You know, I think it's a good initiative, you know. The THA's sport department introduced the game to provide an avenue for students to balance their studies with meaningful extracurricular activities. Sports is vital. Um, it, it helps not only with fitness, but also for your mindset, physical, spiritually and mentally. Um, Playing sports can help you, but um, you also have to juggle your education as well. Um, under the Division of Education, sports is it's, it's, a, it's a vehicle where you can enhance to go further, where scholarship-wise, professionally-wise, but you need to also have an education in order to do both. About 50 people participated in the handball workshop. Following this, the Department of Sport plans to have weekly training sessions so that people can learn more about the sport. I'm Omidara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Speaking of strength and speed, both are required of a good racing goat. And this is achieved by the hard work and dedication of the owners, trainers and jockeys. The animals are trained for at least two months prior to racing. It is thought that nanny goats are better runners. However, billy goats are the preferred choice since they live longer. A racing goat can live as long as 13 years. Now the cruise ship season is soon coming to an end. This entire season provided greater economic opportunity for tour operators on the island. We have more details in this story. The 2015-2016 cruise season is coming to an end. And so far there have been 45 vessel calls to Tobago. The increase in cruise ship arrivals has provided economic opportunity for tourism operators on the island. Just behind me, the German vessel Mingschiff 3 is on its 11th call to the port of Scarborough and Ian Mackay looks forward to the passengers coming off this ship. The cruise ship industry has been a tremendous help to us. We have guided tours um, from many of the cruise ships, particularly when we have a German ship for instance. The influx of cruise passengers also provided maxi, taxi and tour operators with additional opportunities for increased revenues. There are benefits, there are financial benefits and we don't only look at it from a financial point of view, we look at it as um, promoting the destination, which is most important, all right? Once you have a good and clean destination, the finance will come. So the finance is not really our main goal, right? Because we. We go around, we promote tourism, we promote Tobago, safe, green and, and serene, you know what I mean? 
and that's our main goal. Although maxi and taxi operators were readily available to take the visitors to the various locations, the president of the Tobago Port Maxi and Taxi Operators hopes the transportation system will be improved before the next cruise season. So I think priority must be placed on ground transportation, which is conventional taxis and mainly the maxis that take the, the, um, the tourists from one point to the other. The president of the tour operators also hopes that there will be a greater show excursion experience for passengers in the upcoming season. Um, as we know that Englishman's Bay, Castara, um, that Caribbean coastline is pretty scenic. So I believe that if we have a facility up on that side that is uh, more geared towards um, attracting persons to come up there, uh, as we would have down in, uh, on the southwestern side, we may be able to put together a structured tour, beach tour uh, for that side of the island. The 2015-2016 cruise season comes to an end in May, while the 2016-2017 cruise season is set to begin in October. From the Division of Tourism and Transportation, I'm Juliet James reporting for Let's Talk Tobago. At this main entrance, hundreds of racing fans made their way for the exciting events on Easter Monday. Now, pork is one of the most popular meats on the market. Here's a story on a group of Arthur Lockjack Graduate School of Business graduates who did some interesting research on pig farming. Here's more. Renette Clinton, owner of Pork International Group Limited, is one of over 60 pig farmers in Tobago. Mrs. Clinton has been in the pig business for more than 20 years. So she was one of the ideal sources of information for a group of students from the Arthur Lockjack Graduate School of Business who decided to research pig farming for their final project entitled Tobago Sustainable Pig Pork Production. What has happened over the years, there were... There are many bloods and then there are periods of low production in the market. What we would have done is to look at a holistic approach along a value chain of how we farmers in, pig farmers in Tobago in particular and livestock farmers can produce towards having a sustainable production process. The three-member team also worked with the Division of Agriculture, Marine Affairs, Marketing and the Environment in gathering data to complete the project. At the end of the six months, the results showed that despite the challenges, the industry is a viable one. When we looked at the demand for pork in Tobago alone, the shortfall could be roughly about 18,000 pigs. That's the shortfall. So it means, therefore, that that gap is being closed by foreign pork, and we're importing a lot of pork. If the local farmers are able to produce and capture that market, I'm thinking they can benefit. They can make lots of profit, and it means, therefore, that the local farmers would have to expand their farms. The group received a distinction for their project, which had other recommendations for increasing the sustainability of this sector. We would have looked at things like if we have a better breeding stock coming out of an artificial insemination unit, what could happen? There is uh, also the opportunity to export, I would call it export, to Trinidad as well, because the eco brand that Tobago has. You know, people want what is Tobago, that Tobago pork, because of the eco brand that it carries, that natural kind of essence that people want. The Arthur Logjack Graduate School of Business graduates are working with the division to implement some of the recommendations from their research. This will help develop the pork industry and enhance food security in Tobago. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Coming up, the highlights on the Crown Point community meeting. See you after this short break. Nine days of fun in the sun. The Tobacco Jazz Experience, April 16th to 24th, featuring David Rudder, Three Canal, Third World, J. Cole, Atur Tappan, Etienne Charles, and Grammy Award winning artist Maxwell and Miss Lauren Hill. For more info, visit www.tobagojazzexperience.com. The Tobago Jazz Experience is sponsored by the THA Division of Tourism, Flow, TVC, Carib, and Caribbean Airlines. The Tobago Jazz Experience is much more than music.
While many people were out enjoying the festivities at Mount Pleasant, others were at the beach or just enjoying a nice, peaceful day with friends and family. In our next story, Kern De Freitas takes us to Crown Point for a face-to-face -face community meeting. Here's what was discussed. They came with their queries and concerns to the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service community meeting in Crown Point. The meeting is one of several being held throughout the country over the coming months to get feedback from communities on the job the police have been doing and to address residents' issues. It's also meant to forge a closer relationship between residents and the police. Each district is unique, so to sit and come up with a plan for Canaan Bon Accord and use the same plan that would, would may not work for Scarborough or Old Grange District, we need to hear from you. It's important that we hear how the police, whether the police is performing, what can we do better? And it's all about ensuring that we provide quality service to you. This resident related a traumatic experience after an intruder entered his property. He was given the assurance that a senior officer would personally follow up with his report. I don't know if the guy have a gun, I don't know if, so I didn't go to the gate. I stayed there and I just left it like that. It died a natural death because the police did nothing, absolutely nothing. And I am very well cut up about it, a senior citizen. It's not a dead issue. But I would want to apologize for the poor service that the police service would have meted out to you. Um, it, it is as, as poor as we can ever describe it. So this is not the kind of policing that we have trained officers for. And when we have um, officers failing in their duty, we have to take the kind of stern action against them. Some of the other issues raised at the meeting include the use of obscene language, loud music being played at bars in the area, and even, well, the questionable fitness of some officers. We do have a, a health and wellness program that we hope to get those officers at least healthy and fit so that we can provide that service to you all. We have, we have gyms in some of our um, stations across Trinidad and Tobago, and we will continue to ensure that our officers access those facilities so that we want to have them fit and strong so that they can serve you all. Residents are also being encouraged to join in and make their contributions to station councils at their respective police stations. This will allow them to have concerns in their communities addressed more efficiently and provide a platform for suggestions from the public. I'm Kern De Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. I can stay here all day. It's so peaceful and quiet out here. I feel as if I can relive my Easter vacation all over again. How did you spend your Easter vacation though? While you ponder on that, pay attention to this story. The public is being urged to conserve water due to the severe dry season. Here's Caroline Wallace with some tips on how you can do more things with less. We all strive for good personal hygiene, but that does not mean you should leave the taps running. Instead, turn the water off while brushing your teeth. You use about five gallons of water if you leave the water running. You can also opt to use a glass of water for brushing your teeth. Avoid long showers. A five minute shower takes 15 to 25 gallons of water. That's 40 gallons in a 10 minute period. So turn off the shower while you are lathering up. Use a low flow or water saving shower head. This can save about seven and a half gallons of water in five minutes. You can save even more by using a bucket of water for your bath. The Water and Sewerage Authority, WASA, has issued a ban on garden hoses, hose pipes, and any similar apparatus for watering private gardens and or washing private motor cars and other similar non-essential uses. This is in accordance with the Water and Sewerage Acts Chapter 5440 of the Laws of Trinidad and Tobago. Use a bucket to wash your car, bathe your pets, and water your plants. Fill up your kitchen sink to wash and rinse dishes and wash only large loads of laundry. Monitor your indoor and outdoor pipes and taps and hire a plumber to make the necessary repairs. This will prevent the loss of gallons of water daily through leaking pipes. Report all leaks such as broken pipes and open hydrants to the property owner, local authorities or WASA. For more water conservation tips, you can check out WASA's website 
at www.wasa.gov.tt. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. It's Have Your Say time and we want to hear some of your creative solutions to our question this week. We asked for some suggestions on how to improve the air and sea bridge between Trinidad and Tobago. Now let's take a look at what some of you had to say. I believe these services could be improved through better accommodation for the passengers. The seafarer I could tell you about. That one needs a lot of improvement. When time comes, man ought to be stranded in Trini. Can't come home. We need more flights and for the boat. They want more to come for the people to come to Bego and when time to go back, it's problems. They have to work on that. They know it's the peak season, but at the end of the day, you can't really blame the airlines and you can't blame the people. If somebody chooses an emergency or whatever, something that can be sorted, that's something easy to sit down and have a discussion for. As always, we thank you for watching. Email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and productive week. We close now with footage from the Mount Pleasant Sports and Family Day as well as the Buku Goat and Crab Races. We hope you enjoy. They said they're all running for this race, and this is a good start. And being targeted is one who shows well, uh, as well as Mr. P. They come well inside the final time. He does for this one. Main target is holding them. Movie star coming at him. Main target and movie star. Main target wins it from movie star. Then comes lightning. Thank <laughs> you.